It's the old Doctor Who show, episode number 104, The Romans. Go forward in all your beliefs and prove to me that I am not mistaken in mine. <laughs> control my mind before, and you certainly can't control it now. Would you like a jelly, dear? The TARDIS, when working properly, is capable of many amazing things. Because the polarity of the neutron flows, the TARDIS would be free of the force field. Well, the TARDIS is more than a machine. The genesis is like a person. The resulting reaction is fighting. Are you ready? Welcome back to the Old Doctor Who Show, your tri-weekly classic Doctor Who review podcast. We are coming to you in December, December of 2020. Um, if you're hearing this now, it means we all have not died yet. Uh, but Dan, how are you faring in this uh, nightmare landscape? Uh, Eric, there's a yeah. light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, that light happens to be a train coming at us, but other than that, everything's fine. Yeah, it's, it's, it's been uh, it's been a hard go uh, for on this side lots of covid stuff all close to home my daughter currently oh, is in um quarantine so she's been stuck in her room because someone at her gymnastics had it uh oh, and they had like a you know meet or, or not a meet but like a, a practice so she's been directly exposed so then she's done that and my mother-in-law has it and so oh. we're just sort of monitoring her, and then I got all sorts of other stuff with my stepfather going on on top of all of this. So it's been so much fun. But at least <laughs> I got to spend last night down in Georgia at the MAGA rally, which was great because, uh, you know, I'm finally hoping that we could hashtag steal the heel. Is that what it's called? <laughs> I think it's, <laughs> it's, not, it's not steal the heel. Right. Uh, but Dan, how have you been doing? I just uh, I have a laundry wow. list of problems. We were That's talking a, a little I, bit about video games, so I think you were about to tell me that no, you're no, playing no, no. I, I'd rather we talk about more about COVID. So, I yeah, really I like to, to introduce your COVID and then immediately be like, "I'm really enjoying Link's Awakening" because I had I had a birthday that passed, and uh, my birthday. wife freaked out and bought me like a bunch of Switch games. So I have I got uh, Skyrim, which I had already played on Xbox. 360 and I put like 200 hours into it, but I'll put another 200. She got me The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt on Switch, which I know you're a huge fan of. I got Zelda um, Link's Awakening, which I've always wanted to play and I'm I'm loving. That's what I'm playing now. And I got Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3, the Black Order that I can play with my kids. So it was a it was a lot of that's incredible. uh, Really good time. Wow, that's really good. You got a lot more Grissom too early, I think. It was coming at you hard and from all angles. You got sadness in the family, and you also got a video game. Take it. Oh, open a door, Dan. Let's open the video game door. That's. that's You are playing Spider Man. (laughs) (laughs) There is no way to follow any of this. Well, first of all, happy birthday, uh, past, and uh, second of all. Sorry about all the horribleness. <laughs> and third of all, video games. Um, the worst wow. about We're, birthdays, like, and I always think of that Pat, Pat Oswald thing where once you turn, was it 20 or 21, I think that's you no longer celebrate birthdays, only uh, the decades. And I think that's sure. true. But my birthday is in November uh, 26 for people that are fans of calendars that want to mark it. And this year it fell on Thanksgiving. Which oh. was always the freaking worst. It's probably why I hate Thanksgiving, aside from genocide. <laughs> aside from you know, the United States, uh, you know, killing the native population. Horrible but the, um, I don't know if it was just that I didn't, never liked attention, and you would get like that's the most amount of family you'd get, and then somebody would bring oh, out right. a cake that you don't want, and then everyone's staring at you. So like the two of those together. So I think it's like every four years, or I don't know what it is. I'm not, you can you can figure that out at home. It falls on Thanksgiving, which it fell on Thanksgiving this year. Uh, but wow. life was like, hey, there's a bunch of other problems. You're not even going to have a Thanksgiving. It's going to be it's just going to be straight up weird. Um, yeah. I want to talk to you about Spider Man. Aren't you playing Miles I, well, Morales? I'm not, I'm not playing that one. I, I'm a. Uh, uh, I, I played the first one. I'm waiting for uh, you know sometime in the spring or so. I'll, I'll get the PS5 hopefully. Um, I'm not rushing to get it right now, so I'm going to wait and play it on that, I think. Uh, but the first one was great. I'm glad that you, you're kind of still picking away at that. I haven't. 
played it and i le- i played oh. it actually i played it for like 20 minutes and realized i'm okay. just not good at games anymore and i i kept having get to re- reduce one. the difficulty to like the very i think it's friendly neighborhood spider-man or whatever is the and i put that on but i will eventually get to it what Still the fact that i really wanted to play wild like hunt years. and because she she must have went through my history or something and saw that i had been trying to buy it at one point that game is like 200 hours right so i don't think if i ever start oh, that yeah. i probably will oh, never, I never come finish out. it I never finish it. it. It can go on. It can go on forever. But you liked I mean, it. Sim- I remember Skyrim. you like, talking about oh, yeah. The Witcher I, when it was out. Which I liked it. Ago. I had the same. I had the same problem I have with a lot of open world games, where it's like um, you do the main quest, then you start doing a side quest, and then you put it down for a few days, and then you're like, wait, where, where the hell was I supposed to go? What am I doing? Who's that person? Yeah, and I that just can't remember sometimes. anything. It's like uh, I, f- I forget who it was. Some some comic or whatever was, was saying like there should just be a mode for that when you come back. Like hey, it looks like you've been away for uh, a couple of weeks. Here's all the shit you forgot. Yeah, and yeah. I would just I would love to pick that up. Um, but I liked it. It was a, it was a really good game. I uh, what have I played recently? I recently play, recently played the horrible Avengers game. Oh my god, that's bad. Yeah, I was disappointed it's, in that. I, welcome to our video game podcast. As we're going to talk about, I don't care. Uh, video we're, games we're talking about this. And it's fine. But I was really looking forward to that because Crystal Dynamics, who's the developer, is yep. a great developer. I love the Tomb Raider games, and before that, I was a huge Legacy of Kane Soul Reaver fan. So oh, I was yeah. like, "Oh, this is going to be great!" And then you got it. I remember, and you were like, before even you told me you didn't like it, like anything I saw, like the trailer or the announcement, none of that looked good and it has the character models where they don't have the likeness to the actors so they just chose to have likeness to other actors that aren't them but they're still and i'm much more like that's why the marvel ultimate alliance series always like it it's more of a cart it's more of like an illustrated look so it matches the the comics more than like just that's some, what they should have gone with some actor yeah i don't know and you said the game itself is it but it was wasn't even that like the, the game was it it just i don't know like objectively it seems like it's a good game that the action's pretty good the characters are varied there's a lot you can do but it it feels old in some ways like the world doesn't feel right everything feels cheap everything feels cheap it just i don't know it was it was not it was not great i still finished it for some reason i, I don't tend to finish games but i did finish this one well that's good um, and speaking anyway, of that was fine. speaking of old uh cheap and uh not seeming right let's talk about ancient rome that, that didn't really work because it, it didn't really feel cheap uh but it did feel old and there was another thing that you said that i've forgotten that was like oh that could that could be a thing for ancient rome no nothing <laughs> that that thing that just happened three seconds ago that neither of us can remember. Yeah, yeah this remember. holiday get me transitions because uh, I need help. Let's just hit the button, Dan. Wait, are transitions like the the glasses that change from <laughs> sunlight? Remember, to sunlight bl- remember to... blue blockers like those those things that remember would like t- t- yeah you would have it. It just looked like you were a, a coke dealer. But speaking of that whole thing, forget blue blockers. Do you remember the infomercial for like the look around, look behind your glasses? So they were glasses oh, that had little mirrors yes. on the side where you could uh-huh. spy on. Like, that was all just for perverts, right? I mean, that See, whole yeah, that was thing for was... Well, that was no, like the was... perv economy. That and, like, that little thing where you would put the thing in your ear and you would listen to other conversations. That's some weird shit right there. Yeah. But, no, the the, the glasses <laughs> that you could look behind you, I never saw an infomercial for them, but when I was a kid, I think it was like a... a, a boardwalk in new jersey or something i had them i was like so excited because i could like see people around me and without (laughs) looking at them um (laughs) we got to get them back we got it if you have a pair please send them to dan so he can relive his boardwalk fantasies i i remember i do remember the commercial and it was or the infomercial whatever and it was like guys i think on a boardwalk so young dan may have been walking by like you would give him and you're like oh wow i could see behind me Yeah, yeah 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 but i mean okay so but i will i will say this and this is it's it's not entirely pervy, but it is kind of. <laughs> but like, as as a as a kid, um, I knew I was gay. Right. But I didn't want anyone else to know I was gay, <laughs> and I wanted to look at the like, oh my god! Like, and but I don't want them to see me looking, so I could look in the back. Well, I totally, what? absolutely, yeah, I, uh, that was in my head. I didn't was like, think of it that way. That is the trying ultimate. to be undercover and be like, yeah. yeah. Do you want so, to look at guys? I mean, but not have other people to know. No. <laughs> yes. Do you want to look at guys behind you? I no. But kind of. I, I guess, guess maybe. Not really. <laughs> it's, just, it's just you standing in front of cute boy. Like, 
<laughs> Hold on, I just have to what? stand three feet in front of you and just face the other you. direction. Don't ask, don't ask why. But do you, the, the, go, going back to the other one, like the listener one, I remember yeah, the commercial, yeah. and maybe I'm making it up, but this is the way I remember it. It was like two old people eating lunch in a restaurant, yes. and then they put yes. the thing in, and it's not to hear the person in front. They're like listening to the other table. Uh, I, yeah. I'm still not sure what that product was for. It's just a hearing aid, but it was like, well, what if we get the the? the it was a curve, spy hearing curve aid demo. But yeah, it's fine. It, it was also like big and bulky. It wasn't like yeah. <laughs> yeah you had to have a backpack, a separate battery pack for it. Oh, Dan. Oh, what? Before we jump into uh uh uh, uh before we jump into Rome. Yeah. Uh, you notice we we spoke about this briefly, but that uh this this doesn't matter to anyone else that's listening. But well, I don't does. care that all of the Warner Brothers movies for twenty twenty one that yes, are going to the theaters are going to be on HBO Max. Yes. In the U.S., which means that I'm going to get to see Paul Atreides in my living room. At yeah. Some now point. that's we talked about that off here. Well, this is also a uh, Dune. This is it's like Dune. A Dune a sister. Dune. Does uh, it? No pun intended. Podcast. Uh, <laughs> do you think it's going to come out early, or because right now Dune is was supposed to come out on December 17th or something, and then they moved it to October 2021. And then right. they made this announcement that says, basically, forget the movie theaters. We're releasing everything simultaneously on HBO Max. Do you think they're going to sit on it until October still or just release it whenever they no want? I have no idea because Why wait? I have no idea how they're going to make money on any of this. Like, yeah, I don't understand is, it. Is HBO, AT&T giving them all the money in the world to be able to get these, these movies exclusive without having to pay extra? Like, it's just part of my package, which seems crazy. But well, HBO, well, the, the, they're going to get AT&T, some... like AT&T owns Warner Brothers, so they, for them, it's, it's, oh, they, don't they own pay Warner anybody. Brothers as well, yeah, so, so Warner... that's, that's okay, their they're studio. all under AT&T. But, like, I don't understand, like, why not okay, just the do around. video on demand, I guess, like, because they want to get the, the uh, from what I've seen, like, the HBO Max maybe subscriber numbers are not what they thought they would be. I mean, they're charging $15 a month, it's more than anyone else. And maybe they're just, for them, like the quick fix of getting a bunch of subscribers oh, is more valuable than I think the that'll work. money they're going to lose. If, if they're going to release the movies, especially if they're going to release them in 4K, which I don't know that they will. I'm not sure how much of HBO Max is in 4K. Yeah, I don't know. This is, we're getting, uh, we're which, getting deep. Well, I'm just saying, like, I really, I am, I am, I am looking forward to seeing it. I, even if it comes out in October in theaters, I won't be seeing it in theaters. Even if. Oh, I'm seeing you know, it in the theaters. If, if we're not, not like no, no. back to normal by October it. of 2021. What is, what is normal though? So I have a vaccine about, in me. Hey, <laughs> do you want to do you talk about COVID for a while? Let's talk about COVID for a while. So, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so let's assume nothing goes wrong. Don't tell me any bad news. Vaccine's great. Yeah. It does, it, the vaccine doesn't cause people's heads to explode like in scanners. <laughs> it's going to be fine. Uh, so people start getting it. The frontline workers, uh, elderly people with um, hold on, hold on. existing conditions. Frontline workers it. and then elderly. It, it's frontline workers, stock traders. Uh, heads of corporations. Right. See, yes. yeah, let's not. The elderly. The Illuminati. Be lucky, yeah. <laughs> uh, so it's going to get around to like people in their 40s that aren't, don't have health conditions like me. Um, maybe June, July. Right. And then for enough of those people to actually get it and take it is going to be months. Like, I don't think, I don't know what normal is, but things will be getting better through 2021. But like sitting in a theater without wearing masks with a bunch of strangers, that's a 2022 thing. I don't know. If I will be in the, if I have the vaccine in my body and then I have the spice melange just sort of <laughs> all over my <laughs> face, I'm, I got to go. I can't not go. And if it's, I will see it in a theater, but yeah. I'm not going to see it in a theater in 2021. Right, well, this was a bummer. I figured by October what? 2021. And I got the vaccine in me. I'm I'm gonna be because I gotta you're probably see it. Right, you're you're probably right. But or I, mean, I just I buy a go. projector and sure. then just do it at home. I guess on HBO Max, that's a certainly an option. But let's we gotta we gotta hit that button, Dan. We are we are Why? almost twenty rather... minutes in. This is better. Uh, yeah. Well, I guess at this point we might as well just keep no going and not ever do the Romans. Let's not talk about the Romans. I, I wonder no if like if you anymore. watch like the stats, I'm sure there's a lot of. Uh, drop offs already. <laughs> anyway, do okay. Um, yeah, hit the button. But so, what made me think of? <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
okay. Let me find the button. Uh, but the the longer we go, it eventually gets funny, right? I mean, that's the that's how I, well, I, I my saw, understanding of I comedy. I saw Timothy, uh, Timothy Chalamet in uh, The King last yeah. night, which is a really good movie. Oh, you saw He's, The King? He was, he was great. He's amazing in that movie. And so that, good. I, that movie, when I saw that movie, I was like, I cannot wait for him to be uh, Paul Atreides. And speaking of yes. uh, Chani... Uh, the new, I absolutely loved Euphoria. I thought was amazing. I love Euphoria. I haven't watched but that. The it feels special like tough. is amazing. Did you watch Euphoria at all? No, because it there, seemed like it'd be like a really tough watch. No, it's great. I mean, it is. It is. It's it's hard to watch at times, but it's just really well. It's like okay. Also, parent nightmare fuel in a way. Uh, as gotcha. we have younger kids with, that are around ten. To, you know, we see what they're walking into, but whatever. It's really a very good show. But in between, because of COVID, they couldn't shoot season two, so they shot like two specials. That oh. the first one is out now, which features you know one character, and then they're going to do another one featuring another character. But it's a great show. You gotcha. should watch season one, one hundred percent. And then season, I don't know how to spoil anything, but it is. I am a big fan of two characters. In a situation, talking, and that is the whole thing. So, mm. like, very deep into character development, like my dinner with Andre style. If you like That's that so kind funny. of thing, you'll you'll like that. Right. If you if you're expecting a lot of action, like a little or before midnight, a change of setting, it's it's not going to happen. But like, it, yeah. uh, or uh, all of those sunrise movies, like Before Sunrise yeah. and yeah. After That's Sunrise, and what was, was the what was the other one? Midnight Cowboy, Midnight Cow Cowboy, and Midnight Cowboy. Um, right, <laughs> which is which is great because then you know th that all brings us right back to MAGA, uh, and my my uh, yeah. Anyway, hit the button. We gotta <laughs> hit the button now. We gotta hit the button now. <laughs> the oh, answer is hitting the button. And there's nothing so it's, happening. It's a uh, Zendaya, right? Yes, Zendaya. Yeah. So, so you, Zendaya or I, Daya? I don't know. I say it wrong, and my kids just yell at me all the time. I Ask think it's in I don't know. Daya. Daya. Zendaya. Daya. I don't know. I, 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 she's an amazing actress, so I should at least be able to pronounce her name. And she's going to so be a great between the two. So there you go. Oh, and she was also in uh, Spider-Man, right? Yes. Spider -Man she's, uh, so uh, that yeah. brings it full circle. Yeah, So that's a great is show. We did, did we get anything on Twitter about this episode? Or do we want to... <laughs> Are we done? <laughs> if you want to tweet at us... <laughs> I was actually thinking like this would have been a great episode to do live. I was gonna say like, hey, we should just do this on Instagram Live. And if oh, yeah. this was happening on Instagram Live, boy, would that be great? That'd be so much fun. Yeah, I think it's Zendaya. Oh, well. I'm gonna go with Zendaya. I think you're right. And think of the of the word day and uh, Deo. the sun like Deo. and the desert and the <sighs> Bremen. Where are we now? 64 AD, July. Yes, of course. He sets fire to Rome. I know about that, Doctor. <laughs> yes, he must he expect his plan will be ready at any time now. Hmm. <laughs> Maximus, must you hiss my name from all corners? Hmm? I'm sorry, but I have news. Yes? Nero has arranged for you to play in the arena. Oh, has he now? Well, I must have misjudged the fellow. <laughs> <laughs> and as you play, the lands will be released. Oh, that will be charming. Well, obviously, you must leave here before this concert. Oh, obviously. Hmm? So if you still intend to carry on with your plan, today is your last chance to kill Nero. Yes, yes. Kill Nero? I beg your pardon. This is The Romans, Dan. This was written by Dennis Spooner. Uh, Denny Spoons, as his friends would call him at the, uh, at the around the playground. Hey, Denny Spoons is going to do a whippet, they'd say. Uh, all right, so this was directed by Christopher Barry. I'm not sure if Denny Spoons ever did whippets. So I don't mean to imply that. It was directed by Christopher Barry. This is the fourth serial in season number two, lucky number two, of the show Doctor Who. And it immediately follows the events uh, that took place in the story The Rescue, which we have also reviewed. The Doctor, a uh, newly kidnapped Vicky, uh, Babs and Ian, all end up parking the TARDIS wrong 
You know how that is. It's on the edge of a cliff. Mm -hmm. It falls over. But hey, they took that misfortune and they turned it around. All of those frowns inverted and they were now on holiday in ancient Rome. And they were having a blast, Dan. But things aren't all uh, Babs feeding you grapes. You know, I mean, only certain things can be Babs feeding you grapes. And then it turns out ancient Rome sucks. Uh, there's lots of uh, human trafficking, uh, corrupt uh, government. It's just an absolute mess. Uh, and so what did you think, Dan, of, of the doctor and his companion's time in uh, right, right before the events of uh, Nero uh, burning the city? Whether or not that happened, his, historians, uh, I don't think, completely sign on with that, but that is the, that's the myth. <laughs> Are you there? Are you there? I just want to let you. Know. I think I that I've he always heard like you know he played the fiddle and Rome burned and he burned it because he wanted to build a new city. But I I, I don't know if that's actually actually true. No, I just I just want to let you keep keep going for this. <laughs> that's what happens when I don't have like you know it's 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 called it's called uh, cocaine, kids. Uh, no, it's not called cocaine. It's called coffee. Coffee Eric just game. can't let a silence be. <laughs> um, I uh, this is maybe one of my favorites first doctor stories oh i really enjoyed this one and i'm not one for the for the history stories all that much i tend to like the more sciencey fictiony ones but uh this was so much fun it was really silly um i was gonna say this later but i mean the the thing that especially when we see when we first meet nero um and the way that he's portrayed by derek francis not an actor i'm familiar with but i went and looked at his imdb and it just was the entire it was 15 pages long um, so he was like the first big name or well-known actor that they brought on to, uh, Dr. Who to guest, uh, on the show. And he's just bigger than life. Um, and it just makes me think of, um, Zero Mostal in A Funny Thing Happened to the Way of the Forum. So between the setting, the costumes, uh, some of the, uh, the hijinks that happens when he's chasing, uh, Barbara up and down a hallway, whatever, it just feels exactly like Funny Thing Happened to the Way of the Forum. Um, so I'm wondering how much of that actually influenced uh, the production of this. I had to look that up. It, it was actually um, in London's West End around 63. Coincidentally, has nothing to do with this, Pertwee was in the original cast in London. Oh, uh, of A funny really? thing happened the way of the forum. He played uh, Marcus uh, Lysias. Lys Lycus? No, Marcus Lycus. That's mm -hmm. what it was. Anyway, um, and so it just, I, I really enjoyed that. It had this kind of like screwball energy to parts of it in between scenes of people dying and being poisoned and stabbed all over the place um so the tone was was funny uh i i love you must enjoy this because it was so it was such a barbara story through so much of it um so the the interplay between um barbara and ian like being left together at the villa and like how uh, you can see their friendship and how playful they are uh before they get sold into slavery um yeah it was a lot of fun and and vicky is an interesting character that we get to see i think it's a really nice change of pace from Susan. Um, not a bunch of shrieking save me doctor stuff. Um, she was pretty much on her own and able to like advance the plot. It was fun. Eric, we can get into the details. We can get into the nitty gritty, okay. but I want to know your top line on this. One. <clears throat> My top line. I did not like this story. Oh no. I loved it. No, yes! this, I loved, I loved the, I could have just taken oh, this uh, story, put it in an IV and just double hooked it. <laughs> it's in my veins. I'll actually, put the IV on my hat, on my hat like one of those uh, things that you put beer hats. in. But instead of yeah. going into my mouth, go right into my veins. Uh, no, it was perfect. I thought it was perfect. I thought it was. You said it was kind of goofy or whatever, and it is. But it also is incredibly serious. And I thought mm -hmm. it was so well, like as a commentary about societies and and you know you have them in the beginning sitting around and they they're talking about the food and the doctor's the sassiest i've ever seen him especially when he's really is. talking about food. like he was the most likable hartnell yeah. has ever been like he was awesome like he was great and vicky was great and the two of them together had great chemistry but in the beginning they're like oh how was that food was so good and what did you put in that and they're drinking wine <clears throat> and they're just lounging around and they're enjoying yeah. the society they're in and then slowly over the course of four episodes you realize how corrupt everything is around them and then there's slavery and there's human trafficking and there's poor people being thrown in jail and like you have like you can go through life and think as long as everything's fine for you everything's this is the greatest place to be and they learn it's actually the worst place to be like the 
the human trafficking element and the sexual, like the, the sex trafficking, because they're they're selling Barbara and they don't make any, they don't hold back what it's for. They have that scene nope. where all those creepy dudes are like they grab her and they're like make her dress up and even the guy that's like the good guy the good rich guy yeah says yeah. like like i'm gonna show you later like what you can do for me like he's supposed to be kind of a good guy and they give him like the secret christian thing but even he's kind of just creepy i just thought the well, whole the fact that he participates in the whole the yeah whole like maybe you itself, use your power to change things uh, perhaps but yeah uh, no, like, and all of the intrigue and all of the acting was great, and I like the way that they structured the story, and they don't really, it felt very modern. Like, they don't do any hand-holding. I feel like you would not really be able to do an episode like that now because there would be some committee and some person would be like, I think it's too confusing that the TARDIS falls, and now all of a sudden they're in Rome. Like, like I liked how you mm. just went from that TARDIS you know, precariously parched on the cliff, which seemed to be a trope with the TARDIS. Seems like it's not the yeah. first time we saw that happen. So it falls, and yeah. then it's like a, a goes to black, and then they're just chilling in Rome, and you have to just sort of adjust to be like, yeah. oh, okay, oh, and they've been here for, and they say, like, four weeks or however they, but, long they've been yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, they were hanging out for a month together. But it was great, and, like, I loved, I think, then there's, can we, we all have to eventually talk about the sexual tension <laughs> between uh barbara and ian was like and i and i'm was asking myself that i don't remember they're not a couple right like that's not how the first story started they're just co-workers they're just co-workers but it is there like they have like although there's that weird thing where ian tries to drown her at the end but they have i think i feel like that was more role problematic like i feel like that she was also consenting that was so they had a safe word and everything we just didn't know (laughs) what it was but like that was great and 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 the we talked about barbara the roman gown is a good look for her i think she she can pretty much rock that uh i don't know so can so can ian whenever ian is in the toka and then barbara decides to redo his hair all caesar style and i was like that is a very good look for this they're all great in this like they're all great and i really liked vicky and i I, yes the rescue was the episode or a story we saw before this and Mm -hmm. i don't i i remember we joke the whole time that she was like ptsd because all these horrible things had happened to her and she was kind of shell-shocked and then all of a sudden they just took her and it felt a little weird but she like was like as if none of that happened in this she was like all of a sudden they're all friends and she but she was just had a great curiosity about everything and her and the doctor or doctor i felt like was the best chemistry that he's had with anyone and he's like really yeah. devious and laughs and stuff and he's just like this little sassy gremlin he reminded me of the guy in magnolia when uh william william h macy goes to that bar and he's in love with the bartender and the uh, guy that's from the burbs who i can't remember is a famous actor's name i can't remember is at the end of the bar do you know that old guy and tom he's, hanks what's that not, not Tom Hanks, but do you know the scene I'm talking about in Magnolia? No, so I, I've never William H. Macy's Magnolia. in love with the the bartender, and the bartender sure. has braces, braces, and he wants to get braces like him. So he like his whole thing like, do you know what I'm talking about? I've not seen the movie, okay. so oh, this you is great. This is exciting. <laughs> Forget it. Forget it. He's like this older gay gentleman that sits at the end of the bar and just gives William H. Macy the business, but like he's like okay. a like an older proper and like the way that the doctor was behaving in this he reminded me of that character gotcha we had a tongue with assassins in this like it was full of everything and i thought you already talked about uh the uh, nero but he was very funny and he was great you even had like the scooby-doo hijinks running in and out of thing yep. which is like oh that's funny but it's also because he's trying to do trying terrible to things yes yeah, yeah essentially and like <clears throat> so it was like a yeah I don't know. It was just really good. The slave, the epic, adve- it was like an epic adventure because you get like the stock footage of the slave ship, but it works. The slave ship. And like yep. Ian, and like even so Ian trying to happened. escape and he fails. So it was, it was just good. Yep. It's good. I mean, so yeah, I agree with all of that. I think everyone in it was at the top of their game. The performances were great. The dynamics between them, you get them split up. So you have different pairings. Um, those pairings worked really well together. Um, 
All the guest cast was incredible. I loved Nero. I loved um, the actress playing his wife, uh, Papaya. Yes. Yeah, that, she was great. Even 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 the um, the royal poisoner. Yeah, woman, and she, she's only in like three scenes, but she's great. Right, and she gets killed, and it's just she just gets killed. She just like gets she, killed. they they uh, essentially Vicky causes it because she switches the poison, and then she gets right. blamed for it because the the target doesn't get killed, and then they're like, "We're taking you to the arena." And I was thinking, okay, we're going to go to the arena later with Ian, and we'll free her. Nope, you just ne- she's nope, off she's the dead. show. She's dead. Yeah, it's just it's just a bunch. Of, I, okay, so so yeah, I, so I was, like I'm saying, I, I agree with all of that. I love it. Does have an epic feel to it? The whole thing of you know Barbara and Ian getting um, captured. That whole part. So there's there's this strange. I think it works, but it's still strange. The tonal shifts between dire seriousness and slapstick comedy. Like they're at the villa together after the doctor and Vicky have gone off to Rome. It's just the two of them. They hear something, it's guards coming in um, and they're getting roughed up and they're like struggling. They're getting their trashed Barbara, too. They're getting trashed on wine and he, they're oh, yeah, doing, they are, they are totally they do that great, but like then, go to the fridge gag or whatever, but yeah, go on. Just a suit, that was, that was really funny too. Like so has that humor. And then Barbara hits Ian over the head <laughs> with the bottle instead. So like, it's just like silliness interspersed with like, right. they're, they're straight up getting yes. enslaved. But right I, I will push back a little bit on that. And I felt like when she hits him on the head, I don't think it was necessarily done for laughs because she it wasn't plays it laughs. serious. She does. You're right. She like really commits to it. But yeah, I, I agree with But In general, the tonal shifts are very much, has, like we said, Scooby-Doo, like running around. And now she's running towards him instead of away from him. Like they do right. all of that stuff. I think a lot of those shifts are, are centered around when Nero's there. So you have, like you're saying, Nero chasing her and clearly is just going to... Uh, yeah yeah and there's like uh, an absurdity with to the tragedy like it, it's it's absurd it's so but heightened. it's also real like so it's yeah it's definitely yes. like a good i think they but so well. but you have you have nero like make, being like <sighs> having this almost mustache twirly over the top performance and you know saying how great he is and buying his own myth and you know but then just like randomly will stab a guard because yes. he didn't try hard enough like it's it's just and then he's like silly about it like it's just it, it was very strange but i think it was effective it just it was a very strange choice he was genuinely a dangerous and scary villain even though he was yeah. so absurd and silly the fact that yeah he would just he just stabs that guard and he's like he didn't fight uh, you know, hard enough. Hard yeah, enough, try hard enough so. And like the whole, the doctor's like, having so much fun with the uh, Emperor's New Clothes bit where he plays a silent song and they're all like, oh, that. yeah. Love. And then he gets loved so it. furious that he gets, his applause is bigger. And it reminded right. me a little bit of uh, c- current state of, of things. Uh, you know, how things can be completely silly and goofy, but also incredibly dangerous when it's someone like that is in yeah. power. So I thought that was, was great. Uh, to go I, back I to the rich guy that, that, is the savior, you know, benefactor of Barbara. He said, I wrote the line down because it was so creepy. I will instruct you in your duty, in your duties later. And he does that weird, like, smile. And it's just, like, about power imbalance. And, like, the, even the fact that he's buying her, but he can't give her her freedom, gives him, like, a little bit of a edge on her anyway. And he takes advantage of that. He's touching her back, and he's doing all sorts of weird things. So the whole thing was just, like, creepy dudes on parade. Yeah, there was a lot of that. Yeah, I agree. Um, Oh, the emperor, you talk about the emperor's wife, so the empress or whatever. She mm -hmm. does like a weird office stare at the camera thing at one point. Did you know? She does at one point. She does like kind of, I think it's like something about Barbara, but I I wrote that down. I was like, that was that she, was that a fourth wall break or just kind of a weird yeah she doesn't know the scene's the, ended she's waiting to hear the cut. poisoning doesn't work and she knocks all the stuff over and then completely does a, a pam to the camera uh, and that's some fast <laughs> acting poison that poison is fast like when he gives well, it to the dude he just falls right over so nero's like uh has been chasing barbara all around and then the the poison cups are being brought in vicky switched them we don't know which is which and, and nero's like given given barbara a bracelet and and wants a kiss and Barbara grabs the goblets and said, I want to drink to your, your health and chugs it. Yep. And like, I didn't know which was which. And I thought, oh, great. Barbara's going to get poisoned. Now we have to like get an antidote and blah, blah, blah. But no, that no. wasn't it at all. The, uh, the Nero has his, his 
manservant uh, come over and drink it and immediately just like Whoa! big eyes looks at the camera and falls over like and, and it's like like that's definitely played for laughs yes yeah, because yeah. of the way that the guy mugs the camera when he dies and and Nero's response but it's also a guy straight up dying on camera yep. it's just it's yeah, like very... subversive in that way the fact that it is packaged sort of as this fun adventure with jokes but it's really has the underlying message or underneath that I thought was pretty powerful. Yeah. It was good, man. Uh, this mischievous little gremlin doctor. I hope more Hartnell stories that we see after this are more like this guy. This seemed, I agree. This one seemed though, the especially the first doctor really feels like he's definitely, you know, set that tone of the doctor is going to use his, his brains and figure out what's going on to be able to, you know, achieve his, his end result, his goals. But throughout this entire story, the doctor doesn't really know what's going on. Mm -hmm. Like, and they make okay, a joke so, of that too, to some extent. They to say, some extent, yeah, like, they point whenever that out. they're, whenever they're first walking away from the villa, they're going to Rome. The doctor sees um, the real uh, liar player musician, uh, dead in uh, Maximus Petrullian. Was is, yeah, they don't even attempt to help in, him. In, he's just. He's no, but the doctor realizes, he says later that he realized exactly what was going on. So that's why he picked up the liar and saw the guard and mm -hmm. was like going along with it. But so he's, you know, trying to figure out what's going on with that as it's happening. And then there's the um, sort of good, but not really Tavius um, um, guy who yeah, the secret is in on some sort of plot with him, but he doesn't really ever say what's going on. The doctor's just going to figure it out as he goes. And so it's just that. Now that scene, that, that is thing, played like the for doctor, laughs, like barely laughs. keeping his head above water as he's trying to figure out the plot and try to, uh, right. you know, solve. But that's, the, I mean, I think that's him. And they, they cap that off at the end too, when Vicky is like, but does he know what he's doing or he's over there? He looks like he knows what he's doing. And then Barbara's like, yeah, kind of, but not really. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but that's sort really. of him. He is sort of yeah, kind no, of. No, I love it. I'm not, and it's not at all a criticism. But like it's when the, he's like, talking is... to Tavis, or whatever Octavius, the whatever Doctor Octopus, Spencer. when he's talking to Doctor Octopus, he that's like played for laughs. But it's also like him survive. Like I don't. That all was yeah. funny. And there's a lot of there's a number love of it. those kind of things that I feel like work here that don't in lesser stories don't work. Yeah, mainly they're almost running into each other, and they do that a lot. And it's, but it, yep. I always feel like it's always earned and it always works for the story. Like when uh, she, uh, Barbara's being auctioned to all the dudes with the two other women. I think it's like, is it Ian that's walking by with the, he just misses her. So the, Ian, yeah. I think, and the other guy who I forget the character's name, the guy from the slave ship. Delos. They're in Rome and then they're talking and then they leave, they exit stage right or whatever and then all of a sudden barbara comes out in the background you see and it's like oh if he had just seen her and that happens a yep. lot in in yeah. the palace because you know hartnell's on this side of the door and barbara's being chased for her life by Nero on the other but i always feel like all of that works my only like sort of negative and i wouldn't even call it a negative is i feel like vicky's a little underused and by like i think episode mm -hmm. three she's hardly in it so she sort of disappears she doesn't really well, she saves Barbara Barbara's life, so I guess she has a, a pretty big moment. But that that would she be she plays it. a Otherwise, pivotal role, but she's not used throughout. But I I agree with that. I think that yeah, this that I think you put it in a in a, in a way that I was trying to to say. But you said it better. That this is like the best example of all the things that we see from the Doctor. The Doctor trying to piece things together and you know figure out the plot as he's going, and also try to achieve his own ends. It's the best example of that. It's the best example of these coincidences and, you know, near misses, uh, but it all works. It also doesn't didn't fall into the trap that we tend to see a lot where, especially in longer uh, multi-part stories, where they keep like going back and forth between the same location over and over again, and it feels useless. This all felt like everything, it, it was a tight story and uh, nothing was wasted. It just really kept propelling the story forward. Yeah. Everyone had, everyone did have, if they didn't have a lot to do throughout the story, they had plenty of moments throughout um, that were important. So, right. And I feel like yeah. why this story works for, worked for me was everything was like emotionally triggered. Like uh, there was real emotion. Like you were really worried for Barbara. She's going to be sold off to these people. You're really worried for Ian. He's now a slave. He's got a row right. and how hard, like all of it is, is very human 
focused and character focused and all these moments were about the people not necessarily the plot like oh they got it like ian's got to get here it was like you know ian's got to eventually find they all have to find each other but it was had such great character moments like it was a really character focused versus action focused i guess although there was certainly plenty of action yeah i agree well come i'll come back to the action in just a second but i i definitely agree um i felt so invested you know it's a Doctor Who story. You know it's all going to work at the end. They're all going to get back in the TARDIS and go on to their next adventure. But when Barbara and Ian get get um, captured and then they get sold off independently and one's going to Rome and one's going on a slave, mm-hmm. like I get trying to imagine what they're thinking. Like, what's Barbara thinking? I'm never going to see them ever again. I'm in this, um, you know, being sold into slavery. Um so like the the, our, the emotional stakes are huge. I will say, however, Barbara really fell into being a house servant pretty easily. She's like, I'll just start clearing up these things. Right, yeah, if yeah. Nero hadn't started like trying to like um, you know completely take advantage of her, she I think she would have been fine. Well, she, <laughs> she I mean she, she's while. like, hey, I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna leave. And the the yeah. rich guy's like, well, if you get caught, they're gonna execute you. And she's like, yeah, I guess I guess you're right. But yeah, yeah. no, they, they, she did she did. Uh, sort of work out that the way. action all though. of like just that little piece like okay so now barbara is a servant and then you mm-hmm. have like the added thing of not just the the nero trying to do his business you have his wife trying to kill her because she's kill jealous her. of her like and yeah. all of that was such a kind of a great little triangle that they built that you don't usually get in a, ki- mm-hmm. a quote-unquote kids show i should you know it was right. good. It was really good. I'm trying the, to look the, uh, up while the, we talk about Ian and Barbara and whether or not they were actually a couple. And it looks like they do get married at what point. I think that's the way it but ends I, when they leave. Is that and in the show or is that like a big finish or comic or novel or something? I don't know. I just feel like I've read that in other research. I don't, I don't know if it ever appears in the actual show. Maybe we'll get to see it eventually if it does. But I think that's how they end up leaving it. Um, I did want to mention the action quickly. Um, that we have both Ian, well, all of them really, except for Vicky, uh, but Ian has uh, several fight scenes uh, with swords when he's <clears> the, you know, the gladiator and fighting his friend. Pretty uh, well trained for the... a geometry teacher or whatever he is. I was just <laughs> going to say, he's an incredibly good fighter. I actually wrote that in my notes, that he's a really good, good fighter, especially for a school teacher. Uh, so he had those moments. The doctor getting to do his whole, uh, you know, Concert. fighting with... Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, no, the doctor's fighting, yeah. Yep. The doctor gets to fight as well. Like, uh, and it, I was trying to make sure, like, this is pretty much all shot in one. Like, there's no, there's no real editing in a lot of these. Like, it's just like the fights, one shot, fight one scenes. take. That's, yeah. For the show in general. So the, the fighting looked for the doctor looked to me so good that I, I had to check to make sure that really was still him and not like some stunt actor. I mean, he's getting up there in age. Yeah. <laughs> he's doing a really pretty good job with, uh, uh, the way the action works, and usually when we see these, like the fight, the fight scenes look so uh, slow and corny and staged. But I think in this one, there's actually pretty great. Maybe just too good. Yeah, like no, you said, like it doesn't make any sense that that Ian and the one other guy, his friend Dalos, you know, they start taking on wave after wave of guards and just yeah, like no problem, like no. Not but I, li- up, I not like that. But I, I loved it. Yeah, it was, it was great. I liked even the the Ian and the other guy. Like, even that was a good moment where they have to decide that they are going to fight each other, but they oh, promise yeah. to give him a quick death. I'll make and your like, death quick. So yeah. it's like, all right. And then that guy, and Ian loses, which was, yeah. you know, it wasn't that Ian won. It was the other guy was going to, you know, behead Ian, and then he turned against uh, the Nero. Emperor, or uh, Nero. So that was yeah. even good. So it was like, Ian, was Ian, Ian fights really well, but they didn't make him, like, unstoppable. Like, he tries to... Right, escape on the prison ship and loses, and then he fights this guy and he loses. So it wasn't like he was, you know, overpowered. But I mean, yeah, he, for, right. for a school teacher, right. he's certainly the better than Maybe my teachers bit. were. He keeps in shape. Oh, I liked it so much, though. I was not expecting to have liked it as much as I did because I don't always like all of the Hartnell ones. So I was, it was like a no, really is, nice surprise for me. This has got to be. Yeah, uh, the top three of uh, uh, Hartnell stories that I've seen. I've just really loved all of it. And uh, just just the whole cast together, like we said, the chemistry all around was just kind of perfect. So who knew? We actually loved this one. Yeah, there you go. Did anyone else like it or hate it? or? 
No, this is pretty much roundly hated by the entire world. Just kidding. Yeah, my guess is people all love this story because I, I think you would be a, a pretty uh, rotten person. Uh, cold-hearted, cold-hearted monster not to uh, have really liked this story. So hopefully that's the case. While you are looking up our uh, emails and tweets and stuff, I did what I usually do, which is check the iTunes store uh, podcast review section. I don't know what I'm getting at. And Dan, we don't just have one review. Uh We don't just have two reviews. Wait, We have three reviews. Three three reviews. Five-star reviews. In the uh, iTunes store. Now, this is the U.S. store, so if you've left us a review in any other store outside of the U.S., we no longer can read them, which is an annoying thing. I don't understand. What you should do... Why don't they... What you should do is combine them. take a screenshot of that and tweet it at us. Yeah, and then we will uh, read and it. And we'll read that. That would be 100% we will delightful. read it. Uh, unfortunately, we used to use some third-party thing that let us... Sort of gave us a digest of the reviews, but Not that anymore. stopped, so... Right now, we can't read outside of the U.S. Um, obviously, if you have a review in Stitcher or we're on Spotify and we're on all those other ones, you can leave reviews there. And if uh, I don't know if you do type reviews on Spotify, but if you do, same thing. You can send us a screenshot or whatever. Because I usually just awesome. check the the Apple ones. So the first one, this well, one tell us comes. About these. You answer that. What happened? Yeah. So tell oh, us. Oh yeah. Tell so us this first say. one comes. Uh, from the Sinful Dwarf, uh, which is a great name. That sounds like a uh, it sounds like a new wave song of some kind. The Sinful Dwarf. Uh, this is the subject is great reviews of classic Doctor Who. Five stars. Highly Five stars. highly recommended. Fantastic to relive the classic Doctor Who what? through the eyes of Stop. people watching them for the first time. That is us. Humorous commentary That's and us. great chemistry from the hosts. Ticks a lot of pop culture boxes for me personally. David Lynch, Crispin Glover, and more. All right, we're already best friends. Uh, will be a sad day when they run out of episodes to review. Well, there's a lot of Doctor Who's, and I think we're on for another, like, four or five years. It's been a while yeah, already. Fine. We're approaching six years, I think, which is insane. It's but, been yeah, a We're while. approaching six years in next month. Uh, but, yeah, I think we at least have Wait, another that can't two be years right. in us. Uh, okay, so the next one comes to us from good old Doctor Who. So Doctor Who himself is, uh, is writing to say <laughs> Ambassadors of Dearth. Uh, Eric and Dan enjoy John Pertwee and disparage Peter Davison as much as I do. Oh, here's another uh, BFF for us. This Yay. tri-weekly podcast is a cornerstone of my nostalgic remembrances of the Daleks, nice pun, with the occasionally punk or Nexus references thrown in. Ambassadors of Death in black and white are the first Doctor Who I recall seeing on PBS Channel 2 in Boston. The space suits, nice. Geiger counters, and Briggs' tiny mustache are exemplars of that period of British sci-fi TV. Eric and Dan dissect all of the silly parts and point out all the good parts. If you prefer the Doctor Who wearing a suit of ample cut, this is the podcast for you. So thank you very much. <laughs> Good old Doctor Who. I have another one, That's Dan, awesome. but you're trying to interject Wait. here. More? Yeah, there's no, three, please, so that was two. Uh, that was two. <laughs> this is a basic ah, math. This ah, one comes ah. for us very recently. <laughs> this comes for us from Katie, uh, Katie Nincompoop. Nope, that's not right. Katie nope. Neekamp. I'm not sure. I'm not trying to make your name sound... Nincompoop, that's probably your actual name, and I just have trouble reading. Dan and Eric fail to make me laugh. Uh, never failed. <laughs> that was an interesting. It was like, oh, that was a five star, but it was like a Trojan horse of an insult. It's like, oh, look, someone's here. <laughs> and you get a shiv to the back uh, like you're in prison. Dan and Eric never fail to make me laugh. This is a fun, light podcast by two people who genuinely just enjoy watching the show. These aren't mega nerds with a comprehensive mental <laughs> database of facts about the show. No, and they aren't experts on the lore, but I don't uh-huh. really want any of that. Uh, in my Doctor Who podcast, so I actually like that. Uh, I also like that they don't waste time with extremely long recaps that I have to skip through. Although th- this it was not Uh-oh. a recap, but we have 20 minutes at the beginning of this episode, so Uh-oh. hopefully you do not uh, recall this five star. I, uh, finally, so I love sorry. how they handle parts of the show that haven't aged well, like sexism. They point it out, laugh at it in a punch-up way, or scorn at it, as the case may be, and then move on without excusing it, explaining it, or fixing on it, fixating on it. 
Most Whovians aren't great at that, including other podcasts I like. This podcast has been a great companion as I watch through all of Classic Who for the first time. I don't know anyone in real life who likes a show, so it feels like I have two friends watching along with me, highly recommended. And I feel the same way uh, as you do, Katie. Dan is, I think, the only friend I have at this point Uh that watches any of this stuff. I don't have a lot of friends. Same here. Let's just put that on the table so it's not like, you know, it's a it's a small pool. But of that pool, Dan uh, is, I think, the only person that likes well, this stuff. We've got a new friend now in Katie. That's yeah, awesome. We do. I'm so glad so that thank you're enjoying, you, Katie. Um, and uh, uh, thanks for reviewing the show. And the same for good old Doctor Who and the Sinful Dwarf. That is a, an amazing number of uh, five-star yeah. reviews. Thank you so we, much we for love, doing that. And uh, yeah, since, we we're talking, since we're talking about Katie... Guess who also sent us an email? Is it the same Super Katie? Super fan Katie. Is it the same Katie, you think? It Probably. is the same Katie. Okay, uh, excellent. Because the, the last name is the same. Difficult. I'm not sure what it is. But Katie, we, we love you, and we're sorry that we're uh, screwing up your name. But Katie says to us, let me bring this over here in a place where I can actually read it without breaking my neck. Hey guys, love the pod. I'm a relatively new listener as of this summer. I'm trying to listen to your podcast along with the show, which involves uh, jumping around, so I haven't actually been able to join the current episode until now. I have a handful of random thoughts on the Romans. Yeah, sorry about that, Katie, uh, the jumping around part of it. It was a good idea at the time, although I can't imagine actually... I know there's other podcasts that do this where they watch from the beginning straight yeah, through. that would be hard. I would have ended up murder suiciding us if we had to do we, that so yeah we started that way us. kind of i mean we weren't watching every episode but we were watching them essentially in order and now for season two in quotes we've been jumping yeah. and i really do like the jumping so from doctor better. to doctor because so we better. are jumping uh, in time not unlike the show we are reviewing it all works out oh i see the parallel going back to the email uh katie says i love when barbara and ian are lounging about acting like best friends and i would i would just this is me interjecting um, you mentioned like the the, the sexual There's tension between them. There's stuff going on. I, I was waiting for I, them to kiss. I kept thinking as no. the, the shows were going, especially at the end, like when they were before it got a little weird with Ian and whatever. <laughs> whatever. That, that shouldn't say yeah. weird. I'm not trying to shame him or shame them. Uh, <laughs> but what, I kept thinking like, oh my god, they're gonna kiss. Like they, I think no. they even come sort of their faces come close, and I'm like, here it is. But it didn't happen. Not even once. To go it on. T- it totally felt platonic to me, but really, <laughs> really well. T- anyway, agree to disagree. Uh, anyway, um, Katie goes on to say, uh, like when Ian says, how about another drink? And they accidentally clink glasses trying to hand each other the goblets. The icebox prank, ice prank was corny, but it made me chuckle. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I know it can be con- uh, controversial to interpret romance in the Hooverse, but I ship them hard, as apparently yeah, Eric I does. agree. I agree with you, Katie. Okay. Uh, Shout out to, quote, you must be imagining things when the slavers come for Barbara and Ian. It's one of my least favorite Doctor Who tropes. Uh, Is that when they hear someone coming? Yeah, I don't remember that happening, but I've certainly seen that in Doctor Who. So that must happen where someone says there's someone over there and he goes, you must be hearing things. I'm guessing. Uh, Going on to say, uh, this is such a zany version of the Doctor. He's just super extra the entire story, especially when he's cackling like a pyromaniac at the end. Agreed. Yeah, this yeah we didn't really talk about how the fact that the Doctor causes the fire. I mean, well, you know, it still is Nero that orders it. He, but put his, he burns put the map. Head. And the map was so right. cool. Like, the, the prop yeah. was so cool and the way it was drawn. Yeah. And, like, all of the set decoration and the design and everything really really worked the map looked amazing and i loved the you know the sunlight going through the glasses and even that effect of the yeah. fire starting and the way that it good. burned like that looked they could have just sat on that for another minute and just like uh, that was great um that was pretty cool um catholic uh uh she goes on to say uh and also when he pulls the very funny emperor's new clothes gag plus all of his mm-hmm. noises yeah uh, vicky swapping the drinks so that nero is poisoned instead of some poor slave girl is peak chaotic good yeah. Oh, yeah, a reference chaotic here. good. Very nice. Katie, we are best friends. Uh, and I'm here for it. I forgot how much I liked Vicky. I've been keeping a running ranking of Who companions through my watch through, and she's towards the top, and I was trying to remember why I like her so much. This is why. Uh, I love how the fire incident is referenced in the current Who in Fires of Pompeii. The doctor says the fire... Oh, the doctor says the great fire was only partially my fault. I forgot about That's that. That's true. Yeah, so did I. That's thank you, Katie. That's awesome. Um, I haven't been watching New Who recently, so I forgot about that. And I love Fires of Pompeii. 
Um, Ian walking around the TARDIS at the end with a wine gulp in one hand and a wine jug in the other is a real vibe. 10 out of 10. Uh, Barbara being chased around by Nero is jarring, to yeah, say yeah. the least. I'm editorializing here. Uh, it's playing harassment or attempted assault for humor, and I don't love it. Zero out of ten. Uh, uh, overall, I really like this episode. It had good pacing. It is funny. And I like seeing the relationship dynamics. It was also nice to see the TARDIS crew get a respite after constant back-and-forth life-threatening adventures. Good point. Uh, in the modern series, they imply there are a lot of unseen adventures that aren't traumatic and just kind of fun exploring. But at this point in Classic Coup, it's literally a connected time lay with no in-between. So it's nice to see a time jump where the companions could just relax. Your fan, Katie. Katie, thank you yeah, so thank much. You. We're fans Glad of you. you. Found the show. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And we just um, did stick with the show, too, a little bit. Like, we didn't really talk about it, but I did like the they finally get back to the uh, their house or whatever. And the doctor shows up, and they can't get a word in edgewise about whether or not they. the doctor assumes that they've been lounging the whole time. And then right. later on in the, the ship... I don't even know. Do they? Ever, we never see them say like, "Oh, by the way, we were also there." You see in the ship, and Wait. Vicky's talking about how the doctor played the silent oh. song or whatever, and Barbara could have been right. like, "I was also working that day. I just happened to be in the, you know, I guess." You're right, all, right. Off I'm screen. assuming they caught up at some point. It's fine. I thought that was. Notes. I thought it was funny. I thought that the humor, the humor worked, S- Dan. Since we're um, talking about emails, just let's jump to Do it. Uh, jump it. our friend. Our friend Christops uh, writes in to say, uh, War Games Part 1, uh, saying, I may be going against the trend, but I love the story and don't think it drags. Yeah, and that's, that's our or? next. The next, next story one. we are doing in three weeks you know is what? five parts. War Games. So we I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave the rest this. of the email for that. <laughs> Dan's like, did we just oh review War did Games? Did we do this? <laughs> I no, I was out and I, thought, a long time ago. I kept thinking about the Romans. Yeah. Um, okay, so what did other people think about the Romans? Let's check our Twitter. Yeah, what do we got um, on Twitter? There was a couple. We got some uh, some replies here. Uh, Misfit Scully says, um, it's lunchtime for me at the moment, so in bed with the electric blanket on watching classic Who. Uh, I'm doing a rewatch of everything, like our friend Katie. Uh, it's a slow process. I'm making notes for a possible podcast or another project. Pity lunch is only an hour. So uh, watching along with us on the lunch break. Thank you, Miss Fitzgully, for uh, bringing us along with you. Uh, Paul Paranoid says, hey, I was wondering when we were due for another episode. I saw this message and the yeah, yeah, yeah bit from Respectable by 80s Mel and Kim fired in my head. I blame you guys. Do you know Mel and Kim from the 80s? I do not. Uh, Paul, send us a link so we can have that song stuck in our head as well. That'd be awesome. Now, is that that's not Mel from uh, Doctor Who? No, that that's is what Mel made me confused British, as well. But a no. classic British pop duo consisting of Melanie go. and Kim Appleby. Uh, thank you, Wikipedia. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, the uh, meanwhile at the podcast writes to us to say, um, in response to the fact that we're going to be watching this, eagerly await a reply from uh, Tempest Futile. I don't know. Maybe that's just, that's just almost a comment between two other people uh, using us as a way to uh, speak to each other, which is kind of cool. Um, a delightful romp? Is that Rob, the one you're reading? Uh, that's the next one. Oh. Rob Shade says, A delightful romp is the best description I've ever heard of this, and I agree. While there is peril, even a death or two, or, you know, 20, um, people just dying all over the place, really. Uh, everything is upbeat, and the main characters are at their height. There really is little reason why today's show couldn't pull off a monster, uh, a non-monster historical. Yeah, that's something we actually didn't talk about. There is literally no supernatural monster. The monsters are, we've traced the call. It's coming People. from inside the Colosseum. That turns out the, the whole time the inside monsters humanity. Yeah. It was humanity, Dan. Uh, the real monsters are the friends you make along the way. Uh, Nitro 9 says, I adore this episode. It's clear they're all having a good time making it. The humor elevates it mm-hmm. for me. And as a teen who thought history was boring, the story engaged me and educated me. This is what historical who should be. Totally agree. Yeah, like I said at the beginning, I don't tend to like the historical ones, but I love this one. And lastly, uh, Brian says, Barbara deserved better than to get chased around by a lecherous Nero, Benny Hill style. Oh my God, if they played Yakety Sax in the background. Yeah, that was very much. Um, that, that, that seems to be the sticking point with most people for this. It should be. This story. Yeah. Yep. Um, but that low point aside is a fun story and the regulars are charming, especially the villa scenes. Replacing Susan with a more upbeat and chill Vicky seemed to relieve some tension. Totally agree with that. Uh, love Susan, but it's a different vibe. Yeah, and I feel like we beat up Susan too much, uh, the character. Um, 
but it it, it works so much better it, with Vicky. It works much better. I, I don't. I imagine we're probably going to do at least one more. I'm not sure how long Vicky's on, but I hope we get at least one more story to see how that if that chemistry keeps up because I thought she was great. Yep. Sorry, totally agree. So that's that's all the tweets. So if you guys want to get in touch with us, you can do that by tweeting at us at TODW Show on the Twitter machine. Uh, we are also at TODW Show on Instagram. Yeah, we'll and see I, all I'm the guests bad with updating my Instagram stories. account, I'll be honest. But I will I will do better. Well, it's fine. It's fine. Uh, also, you can uh, email us at theolddoctorwhoshow at gmail.com yeah. and we'll read your email on the air just like we did with, uh, for our new friends. And... Uh, you can always send us reviews, like Eric told you before, in all the different places. If you want to send us a screenshot of a review, we'll read it on the show if we can't see it otherwise. And uh, you can also check out all of our previous episodes and our um, upcoming schedule at theolddoctorwhoshow.com. Yeah, and as if we said, the Eric- next one is War Games, so you better start listening now because it's five it's parts just for part one and then another five parts for part two. We're breaking it up. We're not going to do all ten at once, so we're just going to do the first half in three weeks and then another three weeks we do the other half. And oh then, boy. so it's six weeks, six weeks of uh, Troughton are coming. Well, could be worse. And then we say goodbye uh, to Troughton. It's the last Troughton story, so that's how we're going out with 10 episodes. That's good. Going out with a bang. Um, and if you want to send Eric a belated birthday gift, you can send it to <laughs> P.O. Box. <laughs> I don't remember the P.O. Box. What is box. it? It's 2131? No? Yeah, yes, that's right. 2131, Red Bank, New Jersey, 07701. If you uh, send us a self-addressed stamped envelope, we can also send you uh, uh, any of the remaining stickers that we have there. Yeah, we got them on your forehead. Please please do. You can put them in inappropriate places. They'll be fantastic. Uh, Show everyone that you're a super fan. Um, Is that all we got then, Eric? That's it. That's all that I'm aware of. Um, Yeah, I think I mentioned this many times before. There may still be a Facebook page floating around, but neither Dan nor I I monitor it. it. So if you are trying to contact us, through that, just use Twitter or Instagram or just our email. Yeah. That's it. Cool. We did it. I think it. we did it. And we uh, had a lot of fun. This was a fun episode to review. And hopefully people made it through the 20-minute uh, opening. <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that. All right. We will see you all in all three right. weeks' time. Bye, Bye. Bye. Okay. Good job, man. Is big but tapping away While the flame grew high And the city fell It burned down to the ground Nero played his fiddle While Rome burned He wouldn't lay it down Some folks like their music mild Played in a mellow way Some like a tune so sweet and low So they can swing and sway I like a tune a band can play Robots, you know?